Welcome to Syntax. On this Monday Hasty Treat, we're going to be talking all about self-hosting and reverse proxy servers. If you've ever tried to self-host anything yourself, you've inevitably hit the word a reverse proxy. And we're going to be talking a little bit about what a reverse proxy is, how you can do them yourself, and what they're useful in, and some different ways of approaching them. My name is Scott Tolinsky. I'm a developer from Denver, and with me as always is Wes Boss. What's up, Wes? Excited yeah. to talk about reverse proxies. It's funny that we had Matt from Caddy on probably about two years ago, maybe even three years ago, and we asked him, hey, like, do you think it's even worth learning to how to manage a server. And at the time it was, everybody was like serverless, everything. And it feels like we've, we've really switched, you know, like it feels like everybody's talking about self-hosting now, you know, and we're all back into, oh, I need a reverse proxy. So that's what we're here to tell you about today. Yeah, I, I've been self-hosting a lot, Wes. I have like 10 things on my Coolify. I just migrated my entire Coolify to an ARM-based server on Hetzner, and I, I cut my bill down from 60 bucks a month to 5 euros a month. So I don't know what that it translates to, but it's just about nothing. And man, <laughs> is that great. The resource usage is like... Uh, so, I, you know, I have my analytics server. I got several backends running on there. <sighs> All kinds of stuff. And you could even host, guess who? You could host Sentry on there if you want to self-host Sentry. Sentry.io is the perfect place to track all of your errors and exceptions. And let me tell you, I was just on Sentry this morning because uh, we had a little bug and some code that I pushed. And I got to say, every single time I come on here is a joy because it feels like there, there's something new. And even to the point where like it's auto-tagging my things as high priority for me. It's been doing that for a little bit. But when I come in here and I see, all right, this is a high priority issue that's affecting most users that come to the site. Now I know I gotta, I gotta dive in here. I click on my error, I go into my error, and then what do I see? I see the exact line of code in which the error is happening. I gotta say, you cannot beat that. So head on over to sentry.io forward slash syntax, sign up and get two months for free. All right. West boss, hit us with reverse proxy. What yes, is it? I, it's a scary it, word, isn't it? It is. It it's especially the reverse part, you know? Like yes. normal, like the word <laughs> proxy in, in general. Ooh, that's kind of scary, you know? But reverse yeah. proxy? Well, they go backwards on um, us now, yeah. <laughs> yes. Reverse proxy is a web server that accepts incoming requests and sends them to the corresponding application server. So what that means is that you your application or your applications are generally have their own servers in them, right? You, you'll have an Express app, you might have a HANO app, you might have a, a WordPress PHP running. Those all have their own web servers, right? But often you will put a, another proxy server in front of those for a number of different reasons, which we're going to explain today. So we'll talk about some of the examples real quick so you sort of can put them in your head while we're talking about the features. But most popular reverse proxies out there, probably Nginx and Apache. Those things can be just regular web servers as well, but they are often used as reverse proxies. Then we have my personal favorite, which is Caddy. Caddy server is a Go-based server, and generally you're going to be putting that in front of your actual, in our case, in front of a JavaScript application. We also have Cloudflare tunnels, which I've used quite a bit myself recently when I was getting my Coolify local, I installed Coolify on my Synology NAS, and then I wanted to have an external domain name for it. So I installed Cloudflare tunnels on that. It was pretty cool. But then there's also like other ones, Ngrok, Traffic. There's a whole bunch of uh, other ones that are simply for local development, exposing it to the World Wide Web. But I, I don't think we're going to be really focusing on those right now. This is sort of like production applications that need a reverse proxy in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, I've used so many of these. I've used Caddy and Caddy's great even for local stuff. Cloudflare tunnels, like you mentioned, uh, man, I, I use Cloudflare tunnels all the time now. I think that's such a, a neat tech. Um, and, and Nginx, in fact, when I was just migrating one of my, my servers, because I had like an old server that I've been using to host a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. all of the sites that I had hosted on that server were being done through Nginx and the reverse proxy system. And I, I like got into my Nginx config files and it was like, oh man, I have not been here 
in a long time. So yeah, it is funny how we've kind of swept some of the stuff under the rug, but it's it's nice to be able to totally understand how it works. Mm-hmm. So why do you need a reverse proxy? So probably the most common use case of a reverse proxy is to combine multiple servers into a single domain name. So for my course platform, I have I, I have three applications for my course platform. I have one which is an express server and it runs the like the marketing pages and the checkout and all of that stuff. And then I have another one which is like forward slash admin which is a Next.js application that is used to uh, do refunds and, and change orders and all of the admin stuff that you do, right? Backend tooling. And then I have another one, which is the, the actual viewing experience. This is a React application, which is uh, you, you load the dashboard, you view all of your courses, you can get your receipts, there's a progress tracking, all of that good stuff, right? So like that's three things yeah. running on one server, and, and they all are generally going to be running on their own port number, right? You, you run one app on 444, another one on 222. Sometimes you'll have multiple applications running on your server, and they all need to be proxied through a single application. So a reverse proxy will allow you to do things like forward slash admin will redirect to your admin application that's running on... It, it can even be running on a different server if, if you really want to, Right. Or uh, if you visit courses.westboss.com, it's going to redirect it to one application. Whereas if you visit one of the course domain names, then it's going to redirect it to another one. So basically, a reverse proxy will take in an incoming request and figure out which application it actually needs to and which server it actually needs to go. Because the second point is load balancing. Is If you have seven or eight servers that are running your application, you might want to redirect them to the different servers based on which ones are being used more heavily or which ones are closer to the actual user. Yeah. And and you could think of it in that way, kind of like a uh, like a traffic director, right? Yes. Um, it's the traffic director for your applications once those requests come into that main server, right? And probably one of the biggest use cases is if you are running multiple applications on a single server, you still want them to all be SSL uh, verified, right? You still want them yeah. all to have S- SSL certificate. And in order to implement that, you can't tell you can't just redirect your users to port 8887. First of all, because that that's a bad URL, and second of all, because it's not going to be secure. The secure port on the browser is 443. So you need every single request running through one port, 443. And that's where your proxy server will often take over the job of doing your SSL certificates. And Caddy is really good at that. Yeah. So I I host a lot of stuff I've mentioned before on Coolify, which is like kind of a host your own platform as a service type of deal. And they use the traffic. Did you say traffic? 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 I don't know how you say that, but... Traffic? (laughs) Traffic? Tra- traffic? <laughs> yeah, Probably just I've never, traffic. I've never used it outside of a Coolify context, but it does look pretty neat. And, and in that regard, you know, you, if you don't want to, you know, write your own reverse proxy configs and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, that's where you're hosting your own platform as a service comes in handy. Yeah, in the in the home server game, it's also really popular because you might have like, at least for me, I have a domain name for my home server. And then I have like forward slash Jellyfin, and that mm-hmm. will that will proxy the application Jellyfin that's running on a specific port. Uh, and then I'll have uh, forward slash what else am I running on there? Home Assistant, and that will proxy the Home Assistant application. Right, you're you're running seven or eight applications on the server, but you want a single clean domain name for it. You can use reverse proxy for that, and Coolify itself implements that because there's a couple servers running on Coolify. There's there's the Coolify UI, then there's the Coolify API. They have a WebSocket API mm-hmm. that's that's doing everything in real time. And those all need to be proxied through a single domain name, as well as if you want your application to be running at like so you have your Coolify domain name, like scottcoolify.com. But if you want like if you implement 
if you install um, pocket base and you want it to be running at forward slash pocket base, that's again where the, the reverse proxy will come in. And Coolify also has, they recently rolled out support for Caddy as well. So you can choose which one you want. I switched mine to Caddy just because I'm more comfortable mm. reading the generated Caddy config. I haven't even had to look at the configs in, in my just Coolify. I do everything via like click ops, you know, you're just yeah. pasting in your domain. That's a cool thing too. You don't have to generate an SSL. You just paste in your domain and all of a sudden it I have an SSL. I haven't even thought about it. Yeah. So beautiful. Um, another good use case for a reverse proxy is security. So this is something that Cloudflare does for you is don't ever let your users know your true IP or don't ever let connections come through an IP address directly. Meaning that if somebody wants to DDoS you, they need to know how to access your computer directly. And Cloudflare will obscure the IP address for you so that somebody will never actually know where you're, where it's hosted. And then you can also use things like Nginx or Caddy or whatever to simply just shut down any traffic that's coming to the raw IP address, and that will stop it before it hits the resource intensive things like rendering HTML and database queries that, that may be a, an issue. Access management is, is another one. You can simply just, at a very high level, you can deny access if somebody doesn't have a specific cookie set, um, or you can do something like, I'm pretty sure this is what Sentry does. If you visit Sentry.io, when you're logged in, it goes to the app. If you visit Sentry.io when you're not logged in, it goes to the marketing website, right? So like they obviously need a server with some logic on it there that that does that one or the other redirect based on if you have a cookie in there. And I don't, I don't know what that is. I, I'm, I certainly could ask, <laughs> but I'm assuming they have some sort of... Well, actually, let's, let's check it out. Yeah, how do you um, check that out? You go to your network tab. And you will see in there a server nginx. So often, the server will sh will show up as to what's in there. So they probably have some some logic in their nginx config file that says if there is no Sentry logged in cookie or key or whatever is needed, then redirect them to forward slash welcome, which is where the marketing website lives. Static assets. This is also a, a really interesting mm -hmm. one. So if you have a JavaScript application that has static assets, something like um, some files, you got CSS, JavaScript, images. Often, it makes sense to don't route those requests through your JavaScript application. You can simply just route them to the raw files on the server and just bypass the entire JavaScript application entirely. And that's a very common thing to do because things like Nginx and Caddy are extremely fast at getting a request in and sending the response. And if you don't have a JavaScript application where it's not necessary, those will be even faster. Um, and then, of course, you can add caching and routing to closest CDN servers at that point as well. So that's what a reverse proxy server does. Pretty handy. I certainly would recommend checking out Caddy if you ever... Oh, oh <laughs> one more thing I for totally forgot is that uh, running something like Caddy locally is really good because you can get .localhost domain names with true SSL certificates. Not the like, it's it's HTTPS, but it's crossed out and you have to like click the continue anyway. They'll give you like a proper locally generated SSL certificate and then you can get like .localhost. So that's how I, I have like typescript.localhost and, and bossmonster.localhost. And it's so nice to be able to have these like proper domain names locally and not have to rely on like, what was the IP address or <laughs> totally. what was the the port number? You know, like localhost colon 8887. And then like another application uses that. Also, I, Wes, uh, yeah. service workers. If you're running your service worker in yes. development for testing, it'll register to that localhost port. You load up another app and next thing you know, you're like, why is this so broken? <laughs> oh, yeah. Service workers running. I, I can't tell you how many support requests I've had where people send me. They're like, I started your app and this is what I'm seeing. And it's an application mm. from a totally different course they were taking. But because we were running on the same port, they had installed a service worker previously 
And now they can't access my application because the service <laughs> worker is is taking over. Then you have to guide them through the whole painful process of unregistering, like, nuking the service worker, yeah, unregistering it. So, yes, highly recommend. I, I would say check out Caddy. Um, that's definitely my favorite. Cloudflare Tunnels is a very close second um, f- behind that. Yeah, sorry, I'm blurry right now, folks. Uh, my uh, camera is choosing to focus on this water bottle over here instead of oh. my face. Well, speaking of, go to syntax.fm forward slash shop and uh, uh, you can go ahead and buy yourself some of the syntax swag. We actually don't have the Yetis right now um, because it turns out they're very expensive and uh, we were selling them at a, at, a, <laughs> at a loss, but maybe we'll get some more of these in the future. But we got our, we got the sick pick tea, we got the syntax deck, we got the can koozie, all kinds of really neat stuff. Yeah, and just in general, uh, we're selling things as cheap as we possibly can because this store doesn't exist to make us a profit. This this store is uh, for us to be able to share fun things. So, one last thing was I was actually just looking up um, Caddy and uh, WebSocket support because I knew there was like something crazy with Caddy and WebSocket support. Yeah, and I find a a GitHub issue Caddy reverse proxy SSL infinite loop, and I scroll down and. The, the uh, I read this post. Okay, here's the fix, and then it has the fix. Okay, okay. So now I have all the fix ready, and then I look up, and it was me. I posted this in 2021. <laughs> I, I read this whole thing, and I didn't notice it was me in, in oh, 2021. I thought I was gonna oh, say man. me. That's great. Yeah, that's. I actually use Caddy to proxy my V WebSocket server locally because I. Have that's what some... it was about. Yep. Oh yeah, exactly. Yep. That's so funny. Yeah, we all. <laughs> The amount of times I find my own stuff or your yeah. stuff uh, pop up when I'm searching for something is hilarious. Same. Sick. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We will catch you later. Peace. Peace.